Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 1 is finally here, and I gotta say, it's good, right? We got a new map, we also had the unvaulting and vaulting of some weapons, and I gotta say, it's looking promising, but we didn't get a patch notes list. So I'm here today to tell you about those patch notes and what I think about them. Uh, whether it be good, bad, or ugly. So let's get right into it. Let's first start with the weapons and what was vaulted. In terms of weapons, the minigun, heavy sniper, suppressed SMG, uh, tactical SMG, heavy assault rifle, infantry rifle, grenade launcher, flint knock pistol, automatic sniper rifle, hand cannon, suppressed pistol, and revolver was all removed. And I gotta say, a couple of those items is pretty good for the quality of life. One of those items being the heavy sniper. The heavy sniper was just too powerful. It destroyed builds. It also did 150 base damage, plus a one-shot kill to the head like all sniper rifles, uh, but it wouldn't play a role in the current season. I think the bolt is powerful enough as it is, and I think it's great to be at least in this new meta. It already does 110 to 120 base damage, as well as a one-shot kill to the head. I think it's perfectly acceptable. The heavy sniper rifle being removed makes sense, and I'm glad to see it gone. And I'm also glad to see the tactical SMG being gone. TAC SMG reintroduced in season 10. Uh, way too powerful, literally changed the meta. You were forced to run a tactical SMG in your inventory. If you didn't, you were doing it wrong, right? You weren't able to spam, or if you didn't have a tactical SMG, you weren't gonna be able to mow your opponents down quickly. You weren't gonna be able to destroy builds. It just had way too much versatility. It was way too powerful when it was first introduced, and it was way too powerful when it was reintroduced in season 10. I'm glad to see that that's gone. And the last item in terms of weapons that was vaulted, the grenade launcher, glad to see that's gone. There's too many explodes in the game as it is. It needs to be reduced. And a grenade launcher would just clutter everything up and just really send too many nades out, right? I, I'm glad to see that that is gone. Moving on to utility items, uh, we saw the removal of Stink Bomb, Shockwave Grenades, Grappler, Junk Rift, Shield Bubble, Boogie Bomb, and Zapper Trap. Uh, pretty sad to see Stink Bombs go, uh, as well as Shockwave Grenades. Uh, I think Stink Bombs were a fantastic way to force your opponents to rotate out of their builds. It was also a great way to kind of track them, especially late game. It gets chaotic, right? There's a lot of tunnels, a lot of turtling. Throwing out that uh, stink grenade really gave you an understanding as to who was above you, below you, or really gave you the information you needed to know as a competitive player of where that player was at. Plus, it also forced them to rotate, which was great for you because maybe you can put them in a disadvantageous position and then you can mow them down. The shockwave grenade being removed is pretty sad to me as well. Uh, I like shockwave grenades. I thought the uh, creativity we saw used in competitive was great, whether it was for taking high grounds, breaking into one by one, or just destroying builds in general, or for a quick getaway or maybe even for rotating shockwave grenades had so much usability maybe fortnite didn't like that but as a player as well as uh, at least a player looking at the competitive scene i liked it personally and i think shockwave grenades at least should come back at least in uh, another form if not uh, in the same form that it was so i would like to see stink bomb uh come back you know in, in kind of a different aspect as well as a shockwave grenade i think both of these things are uh, a kind of a, a great addition to the game that that probably shouldn't have went away, but we'll see as uh, the season develops how that is going to uh, kind of pan out. Now, hills and shields. This is a big talking point. Slurp juice, chug jug, chug splashes, and campfire has been removed. Now, on a note, campfires are still around as the natural campfires, but the campfires you picked up to put into your utility slots have been removed. Now, Slurp Juice, Chug Jug, Chug Splashes, Campfire all had one unique thing in common. They would affect the white health line first. Your, um, of course, your just general health, not your shields. So with that being said, especially now, with those items being removed, you now have a plethora of ways to give yourself shield. You have minis, you have uh, half shield pots, you also have, uh, of course, the, um, I believe there's, yeah, there's also mushrooms on the ground too that you can forge, right? That gives you five shields if you uh, decide to eat those. And then you also have the slurp barrels, which gives you some metal as well as 10 uh, shield when you destroy them. So there's plenty of ways to get shield. But the only way to get white health is through apples if you so randomly find those, uh, but it's not a viable thing to uh, solely rely on. Uh, but you now have to use bandages or a med kit. And that's the only two ways that you're going to be able to get heals. Of course, the bandage bazooka is there, but we don't know the role that it's going to play yet, so I'm not gonna weigh too heavy on that. I'm just gonna weigh on the traditional bandages and med kits. So with all of those items being removed, you're really gonna have to prioritize your healing, right? And you're gonna have to think about your item slot. Are you gonna play in shambles so you can rock maybe uh, 30 bandages, which is pretty excessive, but if you're running in squads, it makes sense. 
Or are you going to run three med kits, which could be highly usable, especially whenever you get into late game due to no mobility being there. So that's something you're going to have to put in the back of your mind more so than previous seasons. And of course, the last thing uh, that was vaulted, traps and rotational items, uh, at least uh, to their concern, are the bouncers and the launch pad. The bouncer, not too big of a deal, but the launch pad being removed is, and that's a huge talking point. There's not a lot of mobility on the map. And honestly, I'm a fan of this. I'll say that for a later video, but the launch pad being removed is massive because now you really have to think about where are you landing, why are you landing there, and where you're going to be rotating to. Rotations are going to be massive because you, as uh, either as a solo or your team, is going to probably run into a lot more engagements. You're not going to be able to disengage quickly uh, with the launch pad or even a shockwave grenade, so you're going to be forced to fight or find a sneaky way around. It's going to change competitive overall as a whole. It's pretty big, and I. but to be honest with you, I want to see launch pads come back. I, I think that's the uh, at least the rotational item that we need to see added back back into the game and uh, we'll probably see it in the future. Hopefully at least more is going to be added, I'm sure. Uh, but moving on to unvaulted items, uh, pump shotguns, there was an uncommon version added. You still have the green pump, blue pump, uh, but uh, you did see at least a reintroduction of the epic and legendary versions. Um, pump shotguns, they're there. I think uh, they probably, actually they do need a buff. They definitely most necessarily need a buff. Um, I think they're way too uh, nerfed. They were nerfed, I believe, by 10 or 15 hit points, uh, depending on the rarity. And I think we need to see a little bit more hit, a little bit more punch for those shotguns moving forward. Uh, the burst assault rifle was in fact added or at least added back. Um, the only difference is now there is an uncommon version and a common version that is now in the game, uh, along with the rare, epic, and legendary variants. I think the burst does have a place now, given the fact that there's only uh, one AR to compete with it, and that is just your regular standard AR, but now the burst assault rifle is is pretty cool addition, and it does pack a punch. If uh, you can get good RNG on your side, and the bloom is uh, really not affecting you, if you connect all your shots, you're doing a lot of damage to your opponents. Therefore, the burst assault rifle could be used in some inventories, and I'm curious to see if uh, at least competitive players are going to adapt that into their play style. Uh, rocket launchers. Uh, this is a big talking point as well. There's a lot of explodes on the map, uh, but the big thing for rocket launchers... There's an uncommon rocket launcher all the way up to a legendary rocket launcher. It's really on all ends of the spectrum. Finding one is very common now, and it can be upgraded. But regardless, there's too many of them, and it needs to be reduced. I see the point, though, Fortnite was getting at in late game due to uh, there being the removal of shockwaves with launch pads. If you have high ground, you have high ground unless you're getting shot down. But getting shot down in competitive... It's honestly pretty difficult. So I think RPGs being added into the game is going to play a major role, but I do want to see them reduced because right now you could just spam all men. You think about a squad with four RPGs, spamming that out, you're not going to be able to do anything. So hopefully we'll see a reduction in uh, at least the future. And of course, uh, the bandage bazooka is added. I'm not going to go too much into detail on that. It takes up two slots. Um, it has basically five bandages at the beginning. You shoot at the ground for instant hills, or you can shoot it at the distance to give your uh, teammate um, a bandage. Um, but it, it, the it, currently right now, the respawn rate for the bandages is too low. And I don't think the bandage bazooka is where it needs to be to be a, a usable item for a healer role uh, or just in general to kind of carry around. I think it's kind of a novelty thing that needs to be reworked, but it could have potential in the future. Uh, as far as gameplay, what has changed? Well, uh, vending machines are now gone. They have been uh, put in with an upgrade bench. And I and I like this upgrade bench. Why? Because there's six different locations, but it also reduces RNG. Vending machine, you had no idea what you were getting. Upgrade bench, you know exactly what you're getting. It just comes at the cost of materials. And even all the way up to legendary version, it can cost 250 material for each different version, or at least 150 material. That's a lot of materials, especially when you think about competitive. You're maxed at 500, 1500 materials in general. If you're talking about uh, at least a player spending 150 to upgrade their weapons, that's a lot and something you have to think about. Uh, but I do like the idea of the upgrade bench, and I think it's going to play a huge role, and I'm excited to see what it can bring to the competitive table. Uh, but also the uh, 
The Bloom has been reworked. I'm curious to see. I'm not going to go too much into detail on that because I want to see an official release. But the Bloom value on the ARs has definitely been increased and it is much different. And I'm curious to see how that is going to affect players in the future. Overall, though, Chapter 2, Season 1 looks to be a huge upgrade from the previous couple of seasons we have had. And if we, we need basically one more rotational aspect, whether that be Shockwaves or a launch pad, I want to see that added to the game because that is definitely needed, especially on the new map. Uh, but overall, I'm excited. And let's see what Fortnite has in store for the future for us.